Hello everyone, this is Pilpo and welcome to my Productive Trees Guide. Now, Productive Trees is brought to us by Lobster John. Lobster John also brought us Productive Bees. And you can actually use Productive Bees to help progress in Productive Trees. I'll show you that in a bit. I'll also show you how to do it without Productive Bees. Uh, you will still need bees though, so, you know, you might want to use Productive Bees for this. Anyway, let's crack into it. Now, quick disclaimer, I'm doing all of this in my All The Mods 10 survival world. So that's because it's really difficult to get a few of these items in creative. Uh, I did try and do a creative world for this and it was, it was brutal. So I'm going to do this in my survival world. If you are interested in the survival world where I've built a few big things, then uh, yeah, the link for that will be in the description to the playlist. So first things first, you're going to need some bees. What the bees do is they will fly out and they'll go and pollinate and they'll do the, the pollinate and everything. As long as one of the trees is nearby, actually, as long as two of the trees are nearby, what they'll do is, for example, we've got mahogany right here. Let's say mahogany and oak could breed together. What the bees will do is whilst they're pollinating on their poppy over here, they will actually also pollinate these two trees together. And one of the leaves will turn into a pollinated leaf. I'll go and see if I can find one of the pollinated leaves to show you what it looks like. Here we go. I've got a leaf right here on the floor. Pollinated leaf. I'm going to punch it. And we will always get a sapling from that. So I've got sandalwood from that. I think that was rosewood or something. But yeah. So we got a uh, sapling from that. And you're always going to get one from pollinated Let's have a look. There you go. Pollinated leaves. If we punch that one, we get a different one. Green heart. So that is how you progress in this mod is by getting new different types of trees, right? So I really needed teak for one of the trees that I wanted to grow. So what I did was I uh, Googled, or in this case, we EMI'd or JEI'd, let's say, teak. If you click on teak, it will show you that dark oak and jungle are the two that you need to breed together to get yourself a teak sapling. So dark oak, it doesn't mean the actual saplings themselves. You can actually do that with uh, just growing the trees. So I grew a dark oak here and a jungle here. And then what I ended up doing was I took a few clippings of each. So I, I clipped some of the dark oak leaves and some of the jungle leaves and I put them down at the floor here. It's just easier for me to like run around and be like, have you pollinated? This one here's pollinated, for example, that was on the floor banana sapling awesome now of course there's uh several different types of vanilla trees that you can get so you've got oak spruce birch jungle arcacia dark oak cherry and mangrove just started raining brilliant there you go got rid of the rain so these are all of the vanilla saplings i would highly recommend you go and get each one of the vanilla trees and grow at least one near some of your, your bees if you're going to try and get like all of the different types of trees, right? Look at this bad boy. Huge. Love it. So, yeah, uh, right here are the ones that you want to start off with. So in our case, we started with dark oak and jungle. Spread those together and we got ourselves a teak. Now, you do need teak. So if I search for teak, you can see if I go to the tree pollination which is right here. You can see that teak actually breeds with a clove sapling to get yourself a nutmeg sapling, for example. And teak and banana that we just got turns into a plantain sapling, so on and so on. So all of the different saplings like breed together and turn into different types of wood. So we've actually got mahogany and teak right there turns into rosewood. And we've actually got rosewood just over there because we bred a mahogany and a teak together. So the way that I started to progress in this mod was I actually set my sights on a specific type of wood. So in this case, I was looking for the purple heartwood. I wanted some purple wood. So yeah, um, for that, what I did was I was like, okay, we need the Kapok sapling. So I bookmarked that and I was like, we also need Brazil wood. So I was like, okay, let's have a look at the Kapok, see what we do for that. So that is jungle and teak. So I was like, okay, I need teak then. So what is it for that? Cool, dark oak and jungle. That's where I start to get the teak. And then if you press backspace when you're in JEI or EMI, 
you will actually go back to the previous ones. So now we're back at the purple heart sapling. If we click on the Brazil wood, you'll notice that it needs mahogany. So I'm like, okay, I need a mahogany sapling. And then if I click into that, it says we need the capoc, but we already need the capoc anyway. So I'm not going to bookmark it again. But we do need the yellow Maranti. So I'm going to click on that one and bookmark that one. You press A, by the way, to bookmark. If I click on that, it says that we need the, uh, I'm just going to call that the ebony sapling and the capoc. So again, we've got capoc already bookmarked. We know how to make that. So uh, we click on the ebony sapling and we have a look at that one. And that one is capoc and dark oak. So already we can tell the only ones we actually need to start off with, with this is uh, we can get rid of all of those. All we need is jungle and dark oak, and we can get ourselves all the way to the purple heart sapling, which is kind of awesome. So I actually ended up doing that, and I've got the purple heart sapling, I think, over here, or the purple heart tree, I should say. And that's how I ended up getting purple heart. Now, if bees are not your thing, then I highly recommend you just skip this part and you go to the end. At the end of the episode, I talk about a few of the machines that are added by productive trees. So productive bees, this is how I would recommend you would uh, progress in this mod because it makes everything so much easier. It adds a new item called pollen. So in this case, I've got a capoc pollen. And if I have a look at capoc, what does this breed with? Have a look. So capoc breeds with the yellow maranti and we get ourselves mahogany. We've already got one of those, so I'm not going to do that. The uh, ebony sapling to get the yellow maranti. Again, we've already got that. The purple heart with the Brazil. We've already got one of those. Got one of those. Okay. Have we got an old... I haven't got one of those. Mahogany. Apparently, you can get the green heart. Now, unfortunately, we just got a green heart, so we don't need that anymore. But let's go over to the mahogany tree, which I think is this one right here. Yeah. And what you can do with these pollen that you get... I'll show you how you get these pollen in a minute is you can right click them on a leaf. So in this case, the mahogany leaf. So if I right click that there and then you punch it because it's a uh, pollinated leaf at that point and you get yourself a new sapling. In our case, we already had a green heart one in our inventory. So it just popped right there, but that's pretty cool. So instead of like waiting for the bees to like go off and pollinate any of the, the you know the leaves that are about so have we got any hidden around here i don't think we do i think they're all oh no there's one that one there again gave us a green heart instead of waiting for the bees to randomly pollinate what you can do is you can get a let's pop back over here this is my chest full of full of pollen over here so you can get the bees to uh randomly give you one of the pollens to use and you can use those pollen on any of the other trees if you uh, i'll tell you what though if i take this uh this balsa pollen right here if i was to use it on let's say this acacia if they don't breed together you'll just get a balsa um sapling from this so i actually don't know if these two breed together but if i do that what do we get yeah we got the balsa now let's talk about bees and the upgrades that you're going to need so if i have a look in here you'll see that i've got the pollen sieve upgrade so you just make it like this and uh, you use the upgrade base easy enough uh, i have got confirmation from lobster john that the pollen sieve you only need one if you put multiple in here it doesn't do anything so just use the one i quite like having the bees floating about i think it adds to the aesthetic over here so i'm not using simulation upgrades but you can use simulation upgrades you can also use range upgrades and it will increase the range. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the range is to begin with. I think it's four blocks. So one, two, three, four. So these bees can go all the way out here. And I think it's the same in the, this direction. If you use a simulation upgrade, obviously, if you don't use a simulation upgrade, uh, they will fly out and they will go a little further. So that's my, so, oh, and they can pollinate on stuff. So that's my little explanation on the pollen sieve right there with this upgrade installed in the hive some pollen collected by the bees will be sifted and deposited into the hive so i've actually got a modular router pulling out of all of these hives and putting in to this chest which is why we've got a ton of different types of pollen we've even got purple heart after all of that 
and Purple Heart is like quite far away. Although what I've been doing is, as I said, I've been snipping bits of the leaves and putting them down closer to the uh, the oak beehives that I've got over here. So that's been very helpful. You might also notice that these bees are not regular bees. They are allergy bees. So if I have a look at a piece of pollen, you can right click any kind of pollen. Doesn't matter what it is. Just right click some pollen onto a bee and it will transform it into an allergy bee. Now the allergy bee does not get you any of these honeycomb. So we can get these honeycomb and put them in our system for now. But doesn't get you any of the honey. All it gets you is pollen, but it gives you a better chance of getting pollen. And these pollens are really useful. So I might might actually go through all of these and say like, okay, Arcacia, what can Arcacia do? So Arcacia, this one. I'll go to breeding, tree pollination. The only thing it can breed with is teak to give us balsa. Now I've already got a balsa one, so we don't actually need this, unfortunately. Probably remove our Arcacia tree if we wanted. But I'm going to leave it for now. We've got the cacao. So, cacao. That's this one right here. That came from the jungle and the cherry saplings. So we've got jungle right there and we've got cherry right there. And if we have a look at this one, it's got uh, several uses apparently. So, we can make a date. We can make Brazil nut. Brazil nut sounds really good. We need a beach sapling for that. So, you can see that it's kind of insane the amount of trees that you can get out of just the uh, several trees that you get from vanilla. So if I go into my uh, my base that I've got over here and I go over to the bees, which I think are right there. There they are. I've actually got a set of bees with the pollen sieve and a bunch of Omega upgrades. Omega is the, the highest tier upgrade you can have. They do simulations and they also use the block upgrade. Block upgrade does not affect the allergy bees, but... These are max stats allergy bees right here. And all I've got is the capoc leaf above it. The leaves that are in here do not actually affect the bees in here when it comes to the simulation upgrades. The leaves are literally the pollinating block. It doesn't care what they are. It needs leaves around it to get pollen from. So that was really difficult for me to get my head around to begin with. But hopefully that makes sense to you guys. It doesn't matter what leaf you put in here. They're not going to use this to get like the dark oak uh, pollen for example they are literally just going to go for this leaf right here and what we could do is we could go and get like a bunch of different leaves and put them around here and we'll get a bunch of different pollens from this single advanced oak beehive I actually only did capoc so if I do pollen you can see I've got 46 capoc leaves uh, pollen right there and finally we're going to go over the two machines that are added by productive trees. So first off, we've got the stripper. <laughs> stripper. And what you can do with this is, as long as you put an axe in there, if you put a piece of wood in there, it strips it. This is the same as if you were to right-click it yourself with an axe. It would just uh, strip the wood. Let me show you that. So if I put this mahogany down, right-click it, and then we pick it up. That is the same as the stripped oak that we got right there. You can also put a whole stack in here at once and you, you don't have to like do it yourself by placing them all down and then right clicking, right clicking all of them with the axe. Very handy. And you can also put some speed upgrades in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some speed upgrades in there. The next machine is the sawmill. Not as funny as a name, but still. What you can do with this is, for example, these uh, mahogany stripped logs. If I put these two in, it will take some time. It's got a progress bar right here. I like that it's got progress and it tells you how far along you are and then finally you'll get six of the planks instead of four of the planks if you were to craft it yourself and you get some sawdust there are a few that will also give you a side product as well just to give you an example of woods that actually have like an optional extra there is this i'm not even going to try and pronounce that because i will butcher it but there you go there's another like product that you can get out of this this is the brazil wood that i've got right here so there are a few trees that you can actually find in world you will only find the saplings for them though so there's this one right here which is an amber tree 
So if we click on the brown amber sapling right here, you'll see that you can actually get this from brushing some, uh, I think that's either sus sand or sus gravel in a cold ocean ruin. And you'll get yourself a brown amber sapling. This is also the place where you get amber bees if you are looking for amber bees for productive bees. Just putting that out there. There is the firecracker sapling, which handily, it, all of these give you like examples on where you can find them. So this one can be found in ancient cities. Blue yonder, which again, this one you can breed with like a bunch of stuff. They seem to breed together all of the like special trees that you find out in the world in uh in like chests and stuff anyway this one you can find in sunken galleons it says which is uh shipwrecks so you have to have quite a high luck to get a few of these uh saplings by the way because um i've yet to find the blue yonder and i've been looking for ages i've been to like 20 shipwrecks so you have to have quite a high level of luck lobster john did say make sure your luck is higher so there's that one Flickering sun sapling. You can find these in the treasure rooms of desert temples. The soul tree sapling. This one is in the end cities. And finally, the black ember sapling. You can find these in, uh, I think, bastions. So it does say right there, hungry brutes. So yeah, actually, it does say bastion already. There you go. <laughs> This is where I'm going to end the guide, I think. So if you've got any questions, please let me know. You can stick a comment in the comments down below, or you can join the Discord and ask me directly. I do go through all of my comments on YouTube. So if uh, you do have a question, then stick it down in the comments, please. For now, this is where I am going to leave it. So thank you for watching. Thanks for joining. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. I have spent a ridiculous amount of time trying to set this this new microphone that I've got up. So if I do sound a little bit weird, it's because I'm still tweaking levels and everything. So I apologize for that. But you know what? This is the first video that I'm going to do with it. So we'll see what you guys think.